In this video, I'm going to show you how we can add a dust extraction system to the ox metal. So how this dust extraction system works is we have a vacuum shoe surrounding the router bit itself and this catches most of the fine particulate and the medium particulate. Some of the larger chips do actually fly away before the vacuum gets a chance to suck them up but it is kept to a fairly low minimum and is a huge improvement without the system. The only drawback of the system really is that we lose a bit of travel on one of the sides of the x-axis because as you can see we have a hose that runs up the side next to the router. So this vacuum shoe has been designed for the Makita router I'm using. However, it should fit other routers as well, but don't take my word for it on that because you know if there's some crazy designed routers out there, then this might not work straight out of the box. You might have to add tolerance or clearance to some of the housing and so forth, but take it with a pinch of salt, it should be fairly universal. And how I'm going to hook this up, we've got the end of the hose here from the vacuum shoe. I've got a shop vac, if I can get the nozzle, there it is. And I'm just going to plug the end of the shop vac into this hose, and it's job done really. So, let's get into the build. So, this is the array of parts we need, and as usual there will be a build list down in the video's description. But we'll go over what we've got here. So, I'm going to be using some vacuum cleaner hose. This measures 32mm internal and 40mm external. We've got some 20 by 3 millimeter aluminium flat bar. I'm just using this size because it's handy in the workshop, um, but I would actually recommend some thicker material. Go for something like 4 or 5 mil thick because this does bend quite easily. So we're going to have to drill some holes in it. These two are drilled for M5 and these two are drilled for M8. So first measurement, measuring from the end here is 8mm, then between centre to centre is 40mm, centre to centre on here is 100 and then centre to centre here is 64mm. We have got some M8 bolts, nuts and washers for them. We've got a variety of 3D printed components. This is the vacuum nozzle for the um, vacuum system itself. We've got a door which goes on there. Um, we've got some T-nuts, we've got some low profile 8mm cap screws, pan head screw, uh, another low profile cap screw, uh, spring, uh, 3D printed pin. We're going to need an extended switch mount because we are going to be limiting the, uh, the amount of travel on the x-axis. This is a PVC elbow. It fits just snugly inside the 32mm vacuum hose there and I've just painted it black so it matches. We've got another 3D printed component, this helps hold the hose in place. Um, we've got some hose clamps and we've got two, we need to print two of these. Uh, these have 688 RS bearings installed front and back and they're printed in two halves like these and you can push them together. I'm not even going to bother to glue them because it's not like they can actually go anywhere. And this is a guide roller which cradles the hose. Um, I bought about two meters of hose here. was a bit on the long side, but uh, it meant I could just cut it to length and since the stuff is pretty cheap, um, get more than you need. So I'm going to start by installing the door on the vacuum shoe and I'm going to take my M5 low profile cap screw and install the door like this. So we've got to take this 3D printed pin and it has a chamfer on the top and it gets inserted this way but before we do that we've got to install this spring and then slide that pin through the spring and then we've got to take our pan screw pull the spring back and then start to thread that pan screw into the pre-existing hole in the pin. And I just want a little bit of the pan screw protruding out the back to catch that spring. 
and we've got a spring-loaded latch now. So you can see what's going to happen here. Pull back the pin, release the pin, and now the door's closed. So next, we can take our 8mm cap screws, and we've got to install them in these three holes here. So now I'm just going to thread on these T-nuts, just a couple turns to hold them. And then we have our vacuum shoe assembled, ready to install on our CNC mill. So I've gone ahead and assembled one of the rollers, and I'll show you how the second one's done. So let's put our bolt through, make sure it's got a washer on first, another washer, one of the nuts, and we don't want to do it up super tight, we just want it loose so that the roller can freely spin easily. Put another nut on the other side. Put a spanner on this nut, tighten this one up. There we go, we've got two free spinning rollers. You can kind of see what's going to happen here, we're going to have our hose go through this and it's going to guide it for us. Now we're going to install our guide ring here for our hose. This gets installed on the side of the Z-axis V slot here. Now I've done this already to check everything works. So I've got my T-nuts pre-installed in the V slot. However, it's much easier to put the T-nuts and nuts on this and then just slide this whole assembly on. So I'm doing it a bit backwards, but you get the idea nevertheless. And of course we can adjust this up and down, uh, however I'm going to put it somewhere close to the top and come back and adjust that if I need it. So now we've got to install the vacuum shoe onto the bottom of the Z-axis V-slot and we're going to unfortunately have to take off our plate that goes at the bottom of the V-slot here. And those nuts we installed earlier, we want to get them all vertical so that we can slide them into the V-slot underneath like that and then we can open the door and then tighten up the nuts and then of course we have to go ahead and put the plate back on next up we've got two T-nuts installed in the X-axis V-slot here and this is where our rollers get mounted so I'm going to be using 8mm low profile cap screws, however if you are using thicker aluminium um, flat bar than I am, you'll want to go ahead and get some longer length um, cap screws. And then you want to go ahead and slide it right up to the gantry plate and then tighten up those cap screws. So now I'm going to take a short piece of hose. I'm going to fit on my elbow and this in my case is such a tight fit I'm not actually going to need any hose clamps for this and this gets threaded down through the mount I'm going to put on a hose clamp and then it gets inserted in the theory bit of a struggle we're going to get the damn thing there we go, and that gets installed onto the vacuum shoe right there. And we've also got to add our extended switch mount on the X carriage, um, and this is because we've got the vacuum shoe down here, it's offset, we've got the hose coming off one side, which would otherwise knock into our Y axis V slot here, so we need to limit the travel with an extended switch. And then the last thing to do is to feed another length of hose through our rollers. I am going to use a hose clamp on this junction because I don't want the hose getting pulled off. Push that onto the PVC coupler. So that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video and found it useful, please hit that like button, it would be much appreciated. And also consider subscribing if you love this content. I'm sure there will be much more to come. And that, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.